<laughs> so first, just to review, um, here's the major object types in R, vectors, matrices, data frames, lists, and functions. We didn't actually talk about arrays last time, but they're basically just matrices with more dimensions. First, let's just say a few words about functions, and in particular, operators. So functions are bits of code that perform operations on inputs, okay? So there's the combined function, for example, the mean function. There's also functions like the list function, and what that does is it returns the list of objects that you've created or that are in your workspace. What's common about functions is that they all have names. Most of them have arguments and all of them either return output or perform some action. Functions always, 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 always have parentheses. That's how R knows that it's a function. Arguments are sometimes optional. So what are operators? Well, they're basically functions. They're just much shorter and cuter. They're used for symbolic math. So the multiplication symbol is used for multiplication. The power symbol, the caret, is used to raise numbers to a power. And then there's the logical comparison operators like equal. So this asks the question, is x equal to 2? And you need the double equal to distinguish it from the single equal, which is the assignment operator. There's also the less than operator, the greater than operator, greater than or equal to, not less than, etc. There's a whole host of possible comparisons that you could make. All of these work element by element. So now sometimes when you're analyzing your data, you run into things that have missing values. And this often happens just because you actually don't have the data. The problem is when you try to work with objects that have missing values, like say a vector, if you try to do something on the vector, like take the sum of the values, what you get is an NA. That's because any operation on something with missing values will typically return missing. That's because R is not going to make any assumptions about those missing data. So you need to do something about that. and. Um, the first thing is you can use the isNA um, function and to identify which values are missing. Then what you can do is you can actually remove those using indexing, which we'll talk about later. Um, the any function is kind of handy because you might have a really huge data set and you don't want to look at every single value, you just want to know is any of them missing and that'll return a true because at least one is missing. The naomit function just returns the original vector or object with the missing values left off. Infinite and indefinite values are closely related and they're tested using similar functions is.finite, is.infinite, is.nan, is.number. Okay, and these usually happen by from division by zero or by taking the log of zero. And if you want to have a little bit more control over your output, you can use the cat function so that you can paste um, character strings so you can label your outputs. In any way, what you see is you get INF, minus INF, and NAN. Okay, so finally, our final topic for today is factors. Now, factors is a derived data type, and we have to use them all the time because we often have categorical data. So they look like character vectors, but remember, they're a different type because they indicate categorical data. So for example, you might have big, medium, and small size, or you might have flower colors, red, blue, and green. These are used heavily in ANOVA, for example, and they may be ordered or unordered. In R, factors have levels. So they have this other attribute called levels to indicate the internal value that's associated with each level of the factor. It's internally stored as an integer. So the factors are stored as integers internally. 
Okay, so that's useful to know so that you can understand the behavior of factors. And um, sometimes when you want to actually extract the character vector back out, you can use a function like as.character to do that. So now let's look at some demonstrations. Okay, so let's do a little demonstration of factors. And for data, we're going to use some Hawaiian islands. So Kauai, Oahu, Maui, and the Big Island. And for numeric data, we're going to use population in thousands. So 69, 953, 144, and 185. If we try to plot x as islands and y as population, we get an error message. And why is that? Well, islands is a character vector. If we check the mode of islands, it's character. If we check the class of islands, it's a character vector. And there's no plot method for character vectors. <laughs> there is for factors. Okay, so what we need to do is convert this into a factor. So, okay, so let's see. If we just look at what it looks like, you see it just it's just a character string vector. Um, okay, so to, it's a pretty simple thing to convert it into a factor. You just use the factor function. Oops, make sure you spell it correctly. Okay, and so now when we look at islands, you see there's an extra thing here, which is the levels of the factors. Okay, so let's try to plot it again. Oops, and voila, we have actually a plot. <laughs> Okay, but you notice here um, that, uh, that what happened is it's printing in the order of the levels. And this is not the order that I put it in, which upsets me a bit because this order makes no sense whatsoever. Big Island's the youngest, Kauai is the oldest, then, you know, um, this is... You know, there's, it's not order of size or anything. The order that it's following is alphabetical. And it's pretty rare that your data will naturally have a natural order that's also alphabetical. <laughs> so what you want to do is probably reorder your levels. Okay? So um, <clears throat> if we, it's a pretty simple thing to do. And um, all you have to do is type factor and then specify the order of the levels. So you write a character string that tells R what the order should be. So now when we look at islands, it's the order of the levels is in the order that we want. And when we plot it, ta-da, it's beautiful. Okay, now let's check the mode of islands now. And now, instead of being character, it's actually numeric because internally, factors are stored as integers. Okay, if we look at the class of islands, it's a factor, as it should be. Okay, so I hope you learned a little something about the nature of factors, so that um, when, you know, you want to use them the way you want them to be used, you'll be able to. And if you have a little error, it maybe you'll remember something about um, factors that you need to look a little deeper at. Happy computing!